Hong Kong is surrounded by water and spread out over hundreds of islands, so most commuters rely on boats like the Star Ferry to get where they're going. The Star Ferry is iconic. Yes. It is affordable. Yes. It is convenient. Yes. How sustainable is it? Currently, uh, it's still using, you know, diesel fuel, so in a sense, we still need to clean it up. Why do we need sustainable mobilities, especially maritime transport? The whole transport system is kind of being connected with different transportation modes. If our road transport got very clean, but our air and our water still remain dirty, then the system is still not yet fully upgraded. When it comes to steering boats towards a more sustainable future, finding the right mix of carbon-free power and propulsion will mean everything. Now, it turns out a group of students in the United States are pushing the envelope on how fast that all gets figured out. In fact, their need for speed may one day change the way we sail the sea. The calm waters of Lake Carnegie, near the campus of Princeton University. Since the early 1900s, it's been the practice facility for the school's rowing team, producing Olympic athletes and the perfect conditions for going fast. It's a totally different sensation. It's something incredible. It kind of feels like you can do whatever you'd like in the water. The best way to describe it is just freedom. Andrew Robbins has grown up with speed. Ever since I was you know, an infant, I had been around the water. I remember stories of when I was two years old, I would fall asleep on what we call the poker run, which is effectively a boat rally at 70 miles an hour. Now a pilot for Princeton University's electric speedboating club, he's helping to build a new tradition at one of the oldest Ivy League schools in the United States. I did not have the background in boating like Andrew did. I kind of just found this and kind of on a whim was like, oh, fine, I'll join an engineering club, why not? And then it suddenly there goes all my time. <laughs> I came in once I was able to start working on it with my hands. I'm a computer science major, which not a lot of hands-on work there. And the way this works is called a three-phase permanent magnet motor. And basically a series of magnets turn on and off to push the motor around through the conductivity of these big AC wires. Much more than hands-on science, this is a racing team with one mission in mind, build winning electric boats. When the team unveiled their retrofitted speedboat at a 2022 electric propulsion event, it quickly became the center of attention. To date, at that competition, the fastest boat had gone 12 miles an hour. And we came in with a boat that, as a gas a vehicle, had gone upwards of 90 miles an hour. Organized by the American Society of Naval Engineers, the race showcases the latest marine battery tech and how teams are tackling the weight to power problem. Unlike an electric car battery that's designed to provide a majority of its power for acceleration, a boat needs a lot of power a lot of the time. That's because it's continuously displacing water, which is about a thousand times denser than air. The name of the game here is efficiency. Not very well. Uh publicized, but efficiency cut a lot of uh, the carbon emission of, uh, for example, aviation. It's something that happened by improving and working on existing technology, not necessarily on, uh, you know, the pure, you know, innovation. Princeton proved they had increased their efficiency exponentially. Although a technical problem prevented them from finishing, the boat clocked in at 42 miles per hour. Everybody at the race knew that if you wanted to go fast, this was the way forward. Because even though we didn't win the race, the boat that did only went 13 miles an hour. So the bug was there and, and people were aware of what was possible. This is where the fun happens. Begin data logging. Well, the speed bug was infectious. When they got home, the entire team had one goal in mind, build the fastest electric boat Ever. I'm a little bit superstitious being Russian and all, so you know, if someone says we're gonna beat the world record, I'm like, all right, knock on wood, please. There was a reason to be skeptical. Now they were in the big leagues, competing against companies like Jaguar. Luckily, the team had some experts of their own in the industry. Myself and other Princeton students at the time 
We've always thought about an electrical world speed record and it's always been top of mind. And when you combine passion with excitement and the right resources, such as Princeton and Flux Marine, you're able to do unbelievable things. So we worked very closely with them to develop this racing powertrain. And the big advantage we have is that we're able to make over 180 horsepower while keeping the overall powertrain weight very light. The alumni collaboration paid off. Earlier this year on an official test course in South Carolina, the boat they call Big Bird <laughs> took electric mobility in a whole new direction. There was some suspense because they've got to actually do the official timing and then they got to relay the number to everybody and they relay a time, they don't relay you a speed. When we heard over the walkie-talkie, uh, okay, we got the, the time in 19.038 and then we threw it into our calculator and to calculate the average speed. And, oh my gosh, it, it, that's one, 117 in our second pass, like, that's it. That was a great feeling. After all the celebrations and a hero's welcome back to campus, the team is already planning to take this technology even further. There's a lot to be gained in the speed chase. You know, at this point, our number one competitor is Vision Marine. They're a publicly traded company out of Canada. They're looking to go upwards of 150 plus miles an hour this summer, and we're looking to go similar. So we're building another boat that takes everything that we've learned from here and turns it up to 11. Better. And the more we can be out on the water, the more problems we find, the more parts we break, you know, we know what to make better for the future. With no tailpipe emissions, no spilled fuel, and a lot less noise, these young mariners believe their speedy little boat can contribute to a carbon-free future. It is a super important step in the smaller sense. It's not the biggest one. It's not a fusion reactor that's going to immediately, you know, provide energy to half Europe. But it is a smaller scale. It's better for the environment. It's quieter. We're going to see out of the 300 plus thousand gas outboards sold, a large percentage of those are going to start to be electric. It's really going to redefine a boating experience. We see advancements in battery technology, improving energy density. It'll extremely widen the range with which electric boats can be utilized, going to larger and larger vessels, both for longer range and higher speeds. 